Hard to find a trader who isn't working on the basis that the Federal Reserve will hike rates on December the 16th. So what isn't being priced in by the markets? There are two main components of this Fed hike cycle which is not priced in. First of all, historically, the market always underestimate how much Fed will hike rates. So right now, the consensus after the first hike is that we will potentially have another two hikes in 2016. Historically, that is wrong. They are, at Fed, more aggressive than the market, and that has happened in every single rate hike cycle. So to some extent, the negative higher yield can be one first derivative, which is not really fully priced in. The second one, I, I think, uh, is that, and that's a more sort of... Uh, uh, psychological one is that you have to remember I've been a trader for almost 25 years and I've only seen three rate cycles hikes in my lifetime uh, and a number of people on our trading floor but also around trading and, and screens around the world they never really experienced the psychology of having higher marginal cost because we have gotten used to that when something was in trouble or someone was in trouble then the immediate knee-jerk reaction was to lower interest rate. That is no longer feasible. Of course, one of the main reasons Fed wants to normalize the Federal Reserve rate is to regain that advantage of having the ability to cut rates. But you know, I think the psychological aspect of understanding how market change in a rising rate environment is going to have a, a detrimental impact on the market in Q1. I don't think necessarily we are talking doom and gloom, but I think Q1 will be a nasty surprise for credit, for default certainly, because people don't know the statistics like, well, in a Fed rate cycle, we have default rates going from an average of 2 to 3% of outstanding loans to about 10 to 15%. That is a wide margin, yes, but the fact is there's going to be a number of defaults, deterioration of the overall credit environment. So in Q1, it's not only going to be about energy being on, on the brink, it's going to be a lot of countries, a lot of industries. But I think this is the cleanup process. So net-net, I actually think Fed hiking rates will be positive. But those two things uh, comes to mind when I think about what could, uh, could surprise the market relative to this pre-announced and telegraphed Fed hike in December. Defensive and volatile, two key words for the start of 2016. So as the cost of capital starts to rise, the net profit top line of companies goes down, well growth goes down. So you have two negative impacts on top line for corporations, one being the world growth, so the ability to grow your business, and secondly, the cost of doing the business will go up. So everything being equal, that will reduce the profit share available for redistribution to the shareholders, but also in terms of the intrinsic value of the companies. So there will be some headwinds in terms of the company's ability to maintain the same level of profitability, their response will have to be to be either innovating, uh, capex expanding in terms of new products, better quality, uh, or reducing costs. So I do expect that we will see companies having a hard time meeting their objectives. So again, Q1, in my opinion, will be a, a, a quarter where you have to be very defensive coming into the year, which is unusual because we have this rule of thumb that new money is available on January 1st. But this year, the sovereign wealth funds, the pension funds, uh, even the hedge funds are bleeding, uh, emerging markets are bleeding. So I think we'll have an inverse sort of opposite start to the year. So portfolio-wise, I'll be very defensive, but I will also acknowledge that in Q1, there'll be a very, very, very large uh, opportunity to be had, certainly in emerging market outside the resource sectors, as, as Peter Gunn really likes them. Uh, I agree with him on that. I think in the high yield bond spread with the HYG, which is, is a high yield bond trading on iShares, I really like that, a 6% dividend yield. So I understand that when things come to, to fruition in terms of the negative impact, also that creates a huge amount of opportunities. But defensiveness, volatility uh, is two key words for, for the start of the year but also having the, the nerve to, to actually go in and, and see the opportunities when they come.